All righty, folks, we are back, and I hope you got something out of the current events, and, and uh, especially uh, I thought the Andy Griffith part was kind of telling. We've lost a lot in the last 60 years. We truly have. And again, the phone line is on the screen if you want to call us. If you don't call, folks, it's your own fault. Y'all call me on Thursday and say, we listen, we just don't call. You're welcome to call. We like to know you're out there. We like to know you're reaching somebody, and maybe making a difference in somebody's life. I really mean that. You know, I, this is, we're going to finish a lesson we started, uh, hopefully, entitled Man the Usurper, uh, the Ten Commandments. So why, why mankind hates the Ten Commandments? I know what we say and what we preach, what we, what we say we believe, but we disobey them a lot, don't we? Yes. You know, I, I'm 69 years old, and the Bible says anything above three score and ten is a blessing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have a lot of time, Phil, to play games and, and muck around anymore. You know what I mean? Our time is limited, Jerry, and it goes on. For, uh, time passes by quickly. Uh, life is a vapor, mm -hmm. and no matter how, no matter what you think about it, you think you got another year, two years, ten years, tw whatever. No one's promised tomorrow. No. What you're gonna do? Do it now. Mm -hmm. But I started the lesson on this because I think it's time to understand a little deeper that Christ himself said you can't serve two masters. Now, I don't know about anybody out there watching or anybody in this room here today, but for years, and I still find myself doing this, I want to serve two masters, myself and him. You ever do that? Mm -hmm. You ever try to justify what you want to do because you want to do it? And let's face it, that's the way it is. So why are we surprised when our courts and legislators, lawmakers, want to do away with God's laws and bring in their own laws? Why should that amaze us? We do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We may not impose it on the whole country, but we do it in our own lives, don't we? Am I telling the truth? Yes. Yeah. And and, and are we, uh, we went through uh, the first three commandments, I think, or so. We're going to try to get the rest of them again today. We'll get done as we, when we get done. I'm not going to rush through this. But to see that uh, that all this is human nature to do this. Ever since the fall in the garden, man has willing to be his own God. That's why he ate the fruit in the first place. Come on, everybody. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. I mean, Satan said you could be your own God, didn't he? Yes. And Eve said, oh boy. And he said, come on, Adam. And I said, oh yeah, come on, give that to me. We'll get to make, make your own decisions. We'll get to see right and wrong and become our own God. And where has that led us? Chaos. Chaos. So don't be surprised when you see authorities making laws contrary to the laws of God. But I'll emphasize this and get back into the lesson. You can only serve one master. Yes. We've all straddled the fence for a long time. And after a while, if you, if you grow in Christ long enough, you're going to realize that's uncomfortable. You're going to have to make a decision with your life. That's why our ministry is called Call to Decision. You're going to make a decision. Who are you going to follow and who are you going to serve? When man's kingdom, Satan's kingdom in other words, starts demanding that you do things contrary to the kingdom of your God, who are you going to obey? The God of this world. I think Patrick Henry said it best. Go ahead and say it. Well, he said, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Pat Henry said that? I think someone else said it. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joshua, yeah, 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 exactly. I suppose don't take that. <laughs> I like that. But anyway, so we're going to start. We were working, I think, on the on the third commandment. I believe it was the second commandment yet on idolatry. And I think I got through Psalms twenty three one through eight. I believe. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look some more in this very quickly. That's just chapter thirty four. Mm -hmm. Idolatry. Now, I wish I, I kept back up. If you <clears> missed it, I just have to tell you to back up and look for yourself. But we read Romans chapter 13 and show that the government is not to be here to be our boss, but a minister to us for the for God's glory. That's in Romans 13. It is not told to obey an unjust leader. 
Now, it's clarified very clearly in Romans 13 that the government, the civil authority, is put here to be a deacon in service to God to take care of his people. That's what it says. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Right. That word minister means deacon. When a man be- starts stepping outside the laws of God and demanding in his own way, he ceases being an authority. And it's not our duty. As a matter of fact, it's our duty not to obey that. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, how can anyone think otherwise <coughs> and justify what the, what the apostles did? Sure. They were going against government. To their own detriment. Well, where did Paul write most New Testament from? Prison. Prison. Mm-hmm. Why is he in prison? For disobeying. For disobeying. Man's laws. Man's laws, right. Boy, you get that in the day. Now, Paul couldn't find a job day preaching anywhere, could he? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> On a corner, maybe. He's, he's a felon. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and again, the, the word, and, and it uses minister in, uh, in Romans 13, literally means, according to Psalms Concordance, to run errands a waiter, a teacher, and a deacon. That's what a minister, a civil servant is to be, a man to run errands, to be a servant. What, what are they today? Masters. Masters. What the Bible says is out of order when the servant becomes a master? Yes. Okay. But the idolatry is when, we, is when we start putting a trust in that power to provide for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody beside me? That's right. Yeah. What's it cost us, Steve? Freedom. Everything, huh? Yeah. That's just 34. Let's look at verse 8. Again, on idolatry. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, if, I, if now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I'll make a covenant before all thy people. I will do, do marvels such as have not been done to all the earth, nor any nation. And all the people among which, are, which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for the terrible thing that I will do with thee. He, he, if, if Moses had not interceded on the people's behalf at that time, what would happen to Israel? It would have been they destroyed. Have been God. Cursed. It's gone. They committed idolatry. They were, uh, when, they, when we come back down with the Ten Commandments, what were they doing? Uh, they were committing it. They were lewd. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were fornicating, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, uh, adultery, idol. They, I mean, idolatry. I mean, their head preacher Aaron made an idol. The golden mm-hmm. calf. Yeah, he took all the jewelry off the women's and earrings, all this stuff. And I don't get into that, but those are not godly things. I'm quite honest with you, they aren't. They took them all away. They got those habits in Egypt, by the way, in the world. And threw him in the fire, and, and, and what read got me, he threw this in and said, "Ha! Huh, look what popped out—a golden calf." Simply, when, that's what he said. Right. Yes. Simply, when right. Moses had not produced what they thought he was going to, uh, they, they hadn't seen Moses, and they hadn't seen the result. Yes. So yep. They, they immediately abandoned the idea of. But God, God is even around anymore. Yeah. I wonder if we did the same thing, Jerry. Yes. I think it, we're doing the same thing now, just in general. We are. Because it's happening talk, more and more every day. The influence of, we call it the influence of the world, but we've abandoned the influence of God from the founding of our nation. And as we've progressed more and more, and especially today, we're trying to remove it completely. Oh, we are. Well, we don't want, we don't need God anymore. We got Social Security, we got food stamps, we got chip, we got all this stuff. We don't need God. We don't need farmers, but we got Krugers. Let that sink in. Right. You know, it's strange that all these little things that we turn to for man, everything that we turn to to man <laughs> takes our substance away from us, where we have less and less and less. Now it's going from just as, well, this is a convenience. Now it's going to a necessity. Sure. And now they're taking our substance away from us to the point where we are dependent on the government to take care of us. And what will happen if you don't take the mark? Death. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> beautiful. You can't provide, can you? No. Uh, same chapter. Let's look at verse 14. Would you read verse 14, Lynn? You got your Bible in front of you. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. 
He didn't mean that, did he? Yeah, yeah. he did. He did? Yeah. Uh-huh. But the next one, what really, sh listen to this. Now listen to what he said. I didn't write this now, Phil. Phil, uh, did, did you write this chapter? No. No? Did you, did you write this chapter, Jerry? No? Okay. Okay. This is why he said, don't do it. He said, do not have you a God before me. This is why. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. <laughs> we turned from God and made a covenant with who? Man. Man. Let that sink in a minute. He said, don't turn from me. Or if you do, you'll make a covenant with the, with the heathens. Mm -hmm. But we would, we're too smart for that. We wouldn't do that. And they go a whore, and, and they go a whoring after gods, after their gods. Have they went whoring after their gods and demanding us we, that we leave our god? Yeah. Yep. And do sacrifice unto their gods. Have they done that? Yes. Seventy million unborn babies to start with. And one and one call thee and thou eat of, of his sacrifice. And one call thee and thou eat of his sacrifice. Do you know we have eaten of their sacrifice? Yes. Think, people, think. We have tolerated many sins. But we've allowed the slaughter of 70 men, unborn children. That's three generations or two. Innocent blood sacrificed on our watch. And you wonder why God is judging this country. Yeah. Another thing here too, Butch, is that we've known that they're taking aborted fetus tissue and using that to enhance products of food, such sure. as Coca-Cola. Pepsi. It says here, eat of his sacrifice. Medication is the same thing. They put aborted fetus tissue into medication. You mean murder? You mean murder yeah. babies? Murder right. babies. Yeah. Into medication and into other areas, and it's you know it is a sacrifice that we are eating. Now let's take a look at two more verses here. Now pay attention, please. Now I, I, what this let me make this point. Was a believer in the Old Testament, I'm talking about a born again believer or a follower of God, or in the New Testament supposed to take a partner of that were not believers as a husband or wife? No. No, are we unequally are we, yoked? Unequally yoked. Is and that what it says? Now are unequally yoked. Mm -hmm. And look at even down to all of us. We are all unequally yoked. Yes. Yeah. Folks, I'm not throwing stones. I'm I'm talking about me. I'm not trying to say discourage you. I'm not trying to say you're going to hell. I didn't say that. But what has it cost us so far? Our liberty. How about our children's minds? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about what's it done to our children, Jerry? Now put them in the public health hold. We call schools and finance with our dollars on property taxes. We don't have those anymore. We don't even know where the political correctness is coming from. It's, it's well, let's move on for this. <laughs> and it says, and thou, sh and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. He said, you'll take your, my people will go into the world and take for themselves whoredoms, if you will, unequally yoked people, and will lead them away from me. Has that happened? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Makes me want to cry because I'm guilty. I'm not throwing stones, people. God knows I'm not. But I'm just trying to show us where we are. And I'm telling us, all of us, that we can't go any further and be tempted anymore to give up our witness before the world as who we are. And every time you don't speak up against evil, you commit an idolatry. Do you follow that? Mm -hmm. You understand why? Mm -hmm. Who have you served? Hmm. Man. I don't want to make anybody mad at me, Kelly, so I'll go. I'll just keep my mouth shut. No. So, I'm, yes, go ahead, Phil. Scripture goes one step further and says, abstain from even the appearance of evil. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. now, gosh, I don't, I don't want to get too much in this, but I have to. I said this many times, I'll say it again. If we condone sin in our own lives, I'm talking about knowing sin, I, we all mess up. I'm not talking about unintentional sin. I'm talking about if I am I 
secretly at nights doing drugs and, and sleeping with other women, and I come and say I'm a preacher, and I can do that long enough, and I die in that. Where am I going? Well, you're going to and what's a word for that, by the way? Hypocrite? Yes. Hypocrite, yeah. If we allow that in the lives of our family without, without saying a word about it, if we allow that to be in our family and not say this is wrong and we, we cannot fellowship with this, we cannot partake of your life in that when you're living like this, if we go along with them anyway because they don't hurt their feelings, what do you call that? Hypocrite? Aid Hypocrite? Aid in the bed. Exactly. Hypocrite. Compromising. We say we're following Christ, but we're not. Okay. Isn't that getting where we're more thinking of ourselves and being selfish of ourselves? That's called idolatry. Yep. Keep ourselves from being persecuted, hit a crude, and going to jail or prison or even worse. Let's go back to Exodus 20. In verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh this name in vain. Mm -hmm. Now, we all think, well, that's saying GD, this and that. And that's no, partially sure. true. But it's not all that is at all. It's also called lip service. Mm -hmm. Our Congress opens every time with prayer. Do you think they mean it? No. I don't think so. Do you really believe that they're actually praying to our sovereign God for direction? Or are they just doing it for lip service? From lip service. Obama said that the state was, or the government was the sovereign. Well, Obama sung a song, Amazing Grace, had a preacher friend of his died named Pickney. He sung Amazing Grace. Did he really mean it? Do you think he knows what he's talking about? Hmm. That's taking God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and right after he sung Amazing Grace at this funeral service, he, made, he had the Supreme Court make homosexual marriage legal. Is that, would you say that's probably taking the name of man? Yeah. I think yeah. you might have deliberately intended that. But do you think that, uh, yeah, I think a career could be, but do you, do you think that we are given some time to saying how much you love Jesus when you don't even stand for what's right? Yeah. Is that, is that taking the name of man? If I would tell Marsha all day long I love her and have the woman in bed with me tonight, what would that be? Let's <laughs> Exactly. I'll be, I'll be taking, I'll be in vain. I'll be nothing. Yes, Phil. Uh, I had an interesting conversation with Natalie last night, and nobody studies harder to try to be approved than she does. <laughs> and works with, uh, you know, Navajos and Apaches that really need spiritual uh, help and everything. But she said we are, we are so unaware of the holiness of God. And she said, you know, when, when in Scripture something is repeated like verily, verily, I say mm -hmm. unto you, there's only one time in the Bible where it says something three times is emphasized and it's holy, holy, holy. 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 Yeah. And it's referring yes. to God. And we, you know, it's something we cannot totally ever <laughs> comprehend until until after judgment. You know, and that's, and, and the Scriptures tell us, and in, in, uh, oh, there it went. Scripture going to quote, I remember, I remember my mind will blank, but it says, Be ye holy, as I, for I am holy. Yeah. Now, I'll promise you this no one in here is totally holy. <laughs> oh, yeah. If yeah. it wasn't for the blood of Christ and His grace, Jerry, you wouldn't have a snowball's chance, you know that. But we're to, we're to strive to do what is right in His eyes so that even the world can see there's something different. For Lynn talked about a friend, a lady that gives her a hard time when she walks in her presence, it's to be called Lynn's different. She can't help it. That's who Lynn is. I can't help being a Paul. I was born with, uh, my dad's name was Paul. What am I going to do about that? Mm -hmm. If she's born again believer, she she got to be what she is. Mm -hmm. Or be a hypocrite. Right? Let's go down to verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now I'm going to tell this. You may not know this. <coughs> but in our Constitution, Article 1, Verse, uh, Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2, Sunday was considered a day of no work. It's in, it's in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Read free sale. Now, they had the wrong day as far as Sabbath, I'll be quite honest with you. But the point of it was, they had a day they chose that we would do no work. Remember the blue laws? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What's blue laws? Somebody tell what it was. Uh, stores would be closed on <coughs> 
Yeah, no Beatles done on, 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 on Sundays. Right. Now, it's a, that was a Catholic influence, by the way. Sunday worship is a Catholic influence. It's a Catholic influence. Yes, it yeah. is. Saturday Sabbath is still Saturday Sabbath. But nonetheless, they had intentions of trying to do something to set aside a day and said, we're not going to work that day. It's been chipped away at ever since. It has been. Mm -hmm. So that part, we had at least that much of it. Wrong day, perhaps. But I think the desire to do something right was there. But the Sabbath day, uh, and, and Christ made it very clear that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Right. That day is for us set aside for us to glorify Him. Who needs who? Do we need Him or does He need us? We need Him. We need Him. So we're to set that day aside to fellowship with Him, study about Him, take time to, uh, to meditate on what He's done for us. Should we not do that? There's been a scientific study where it, it's proven that when you when you work six days and take your seventh day as a rest, your health is far more better than whether if you continued working, you know, yeah, every day. That's true. Same with the land. Uh, yeah, the land Sabbath. Yes. Uh, let's read the rest of a couple more verses, and we'll go back to the Sabbath. Verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath unto the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, <coughs> nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within, within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, and made, made it holy. Now again, the Sabbath day was made for us to enjoy, not to be a dread and a drudgery on us. We sure got that all messed up. And the seventh, seventh year rest for the land was, was biblical. But see, we, the profits of the money system, well, we can't do that. We'll lose money every year. So we just use artificial fertilizer. We use Monsanto to make it grow better. <laughs> What's that done to us? Monsanto. Exactly. Yeah. But the Catholic Church did influence that. Now, I don't want to pick, make it a lot of fun here, but we are another type of Rome. Y'all realize that, right? We get our ideas for government out of Rome. Do y'all know that? Mm -hmm. And we also, have the, they, we also have the symbols of Rome, the fascia and, and the uh, Roman gods and goddesses on our, our buildings. That's all there. And our, that's, I'm serious. It's all there. So Rome, we are a, a, kind of a carbon copy of what Rome was. Rome was a republic also. It turned into an empire. What happened to it? Fell. Fell. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that? Is that uh, why Washington, D.C. is called Little Rome? Yeah, could be. We, we even had uh, Posse, Posse Comitatus, which was, in Rome, it was, uh, they wouldn't cross the Rubicon. That's true. And, and Rome changed that and brought their troops into their country, and now we've got our troops in our homes. In, in Huntington, West Virginia, the, 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 the governor just put the National Guard down there to keep peace. Did y'all see that? Mm -hmm. What happened down there? No, oh, they murders. They had five shootings last five week. five murders. Yeah. Yep, I heard about that. And they That's put the weird. National Guard on the streets. Now, is that not violating the Constitution? Yeah, it right. really is. That's why we have some of the National Guard staying in the hotel. Could be. They're, they're, they're down in Huntington right now. Again, folks, all these things are coming together for a purpose. We're seeing it all happen. And if you take time to study the scripture and look at history, like we try to do at current events, history, I, I, I'll say it again. There's, when I was in the military, I did, I, I, we did something called triangulation. I, my job was Morse code intercept to track airplanes and tank movements and troop movements. My job was to track them and get them in the right, to, the right target. And, we, and where we found the enemy troops and enemy planes is called triangulation. Mm -hmm. My job was to sit at a place where the Morse code is put out, and when I heard something come up in a spatial, what's called a rack there, position, you sit there and monitor what frequency, because that frequency come up, that means that the meat fighters were taking off and going into Vietnam and other places. When I went up, they started sending code out. My job was to type it out, follow it, and the direction finder behind me would come up behind me, take those codes and break them down, and see where those jets were at. I followed me on that. So my position was the main beam. They picked it up off my position, said they're out there, but that didn't pinpoint them. It said they're out there. Then they got two more stations across the world to pick up the same signal, 
different, different locations and triangulated them. And they pinpointed where they were. They're in that direction. But this is where they are now. That's what Scripture does. Scripture is a main beam. That's, where, that's the right way to go. History, current events, pinpoint where we are in time. It's not a secret, folks. We, I, I can tell you where we are in time because it's in the Bible. When you understand the Scriptures, it makes more sense what's happening all around you. America is in time Rome. We're in time Babylon, if you will. Babylonian system, we, we rule the world, so to speak. We're prophesied all through the Bible that we will be the hammer of the earth, to, to hammer the earth in the shape of the beast system. That's in, that's in Jeremiah also, chapter 50. Read it for yourself, or 52. We're in the end time of that. So we're fulfilling the, what Rome did, we're doing also. History repeats itself. Gosh, that's good teaching. Yeah. I do say so myself. Any we'll comments, Steve? We'll be... <laughs> Do I? We'll give you a raise. Give me a raise? Mm -hmm. You'll double it? Or we, we can make it in infinite. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go that multiplying zeros don't make a lot of difference, does it? So you said a long time ago that pro uh, prophecy has dual fulfillment. I yes. remember that. Yes, it does. It does. Now let's go to verse 12. Oh, this is a biggie. So it sounds so simple. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This is this could get into quite a discussion. As I wrote in one of the articles I wrote in one of the chapters in the next book, parents today, a lot of parents, and I'm just saying it right up front, a lot of parents today are not worthy of anything. Mm -hmm. They're not fit to be parents, much less honor. But nonetheless, when this was given to the people, it was meant to be in a godly home where moms and dads were godly people and were to honor them and respect them who they were. Mm -hmm. And the home was set up with a mom and dad and children. A mom and a dad and children. Not a dad and a dad and children. But a mom and dad and children. That's the way the home was set up, right? Mm -hmm. we, we were to honor them. Now the home, uh, the foundation of all society is the home. The family is the root of society. When the root is rotten, what happens to society? Right. 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 They rot. It just... How's our society doing? <laughs> we're rotting. We're rotting. Any comments on that? Yeah, I will. When I'm doing deliverances, one of the things I do is I get the people that I'm working with to at least honor, you know, come in a situation of honoring their mother and father. Even though the parents are really ugly towards this individual, I still got to get them to honor their mother and father because if I don't, if I can't get them to that point, somehow I can't keep deliverance going. But because they're bitter. Yes. They're bitter. So if I can get them to, out of that bitterness to honor their mother and father, to respect them, at least as a person, they have a good deliverance. Well, let's look at our idols that now take care of us. The usurping idols that run this country and actually the world. Now, let, let, me, ask, let me ask you a question now. What have our idols done to further the cause of a good family? A righteous Zero. family? Zero. Zero. What have idols done to destroy the family? It's Amen. destroyed it. Damn it. Think about it. Mm -hmm. If they don't want God in the home, what better way to do it than start with the children in kindergarten and teach them there is no God? Yeah. That they come from monkeys or whatever. And that they can be a girl, a a boy tomorrow. Or one of those LGBTQ, FPP, whatever it is. Take your pick. Has that undermined the family? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do you think... They put that in the honor of mother and father. And, and, and since the 19th century, back in the 1800s, this all started. How about, how about our children being slaughtered? How about contraceptives given out in school? And tell fifth graders how to use them? How about sexual perversion of all matter? How many remember when sex ed started in school? Uh -huh. yeah. Remember sex ed in school when it started? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Started out something seemed innocent enough. It wasn't in high school until high school for me. Yeah, well, me too. They divided yeah. boys and girls. They didn't, but yeah. they didn't. That's not the school's place to teach that. I flunked it. And I gotta say this too: Is it the school's place to teach my children anything? 
-hmm. No. Other than how to read, write, and multiply, perhaps. But other than that, what's my job as a parent? Historically, yeah. moral values. Exactly. So uh, they taught them many things, folks. But because we, as parents, failed to do this, our, most of our children don't no longer honor the parents. Mm -mm. Yes, Bill. Uh, you, if you look at the history of public education, it started in Massachusetts with the spe specified goal of having everyone be able to read scripture. Oh, yes. So public education was to be able to read and understand scripture. And they read out of the Bible. And they read out of the McGuffey Reader. McGuffey Reader is all like scripture. The, no Webster's Dictionary, which has, I think, 7,000 references yep. to scripture. So you, when you see all this happen, folks, please understand that these commandments, they could not allow that to be. They couldn't allow these to stand and, still be, and become a new God. If they, if they honored these, they couldn't take over and be our gods. But they still couldn't do it if we didn't allow it. How many of y'all sometimes feel guilty when you pay, had to give a tax for land tax, you know where it's going? Yeah. Yeah. Just curious. I mean, I sometimes they bother me a little bit. I get angry. I do too. I feel, I feel more anger than anything else. It's like else. the personal property tax. Same thing. Oh, yes, what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So they kicked God out of this school system, our God, Yahweh God, Jehovah God, and then they become God. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why your children are rebellious? You wonder why they're perverted? You wonder why they, where they even get their thoughts of so much evil? Well, first off, you turn on TV set, yeah. on the music, mm -hmm. the movies, Facebook, all these, I don't know what half of them are, but that's, they get a lot of ideas, Jerry, from people to the public that shouldn't be talking to them. We allow because we don't, we just let it happen. I mean, when they start putting perversion in entertainment, we say it's funny. No. It's not funny. How about it's glamorizing evil. Yes. How about perversion in children's cartoons? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we can spend a lot more time, but we're going to move on. Verse 13 says what? Let me read it for me. Thou shalt not kill. Hmm. Boy, that's, gotta be, that's complicated. That can't, that's got, that can't mean what I said. That's too easy. Thou shalt not kill. I didn't, I didn't, that, by the way, Christ translated it even better in the New Testament. Thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. There's a difference, you know. But i got to ask you, how obviously have we ignored that one? Yeah. The abortion, right there. Thou shalt not kill. Seventy million children. Yeah. How about the ones that slaughtered all over the world for uh, for our imperialistic ideas we had? <laughs> to build a republic, to build our funds and our monies. How about our young men and women right now? They're fighting in unjust wars and dying for them mm -hmm. for some rich man's pocket. That article I just wrote today. You've been reading it. it a costly deception. I, I, Thou shalt not kill. Does that pertain to us? As a nation, as well as individuals? Yeah, I believe so. What do you think, Phil? Do you think, he, do you think God finds a nation guiltless for, for killing innocent people? No, they don't. And, and, of course, as Dick says, you know, there is a time when you're protecting a life and you have to kill to protect a life. To yes. Protect, to protect a life, not... There's no other reason to kill. I carry a gun not to take life, but to save life. Right. That's just the way it is. We see, killing and murder are two different things. But this the murder is what this is referencing to. That's what it is. And when we justify it or allow it for whatever reason we do, we are guilty of it. Murder is intentional. Sure it is. Yes. Thou shalt not kill is general. It's a... It's, Kill is a general compared to murder. Mur mur murder is murder is killing someone is innocent and not worthy of death, so to speak. Okay. Killing is self-defense, perhaps. That's what happened yes. with Christ. Yeah, right? I thought it was going through my mind. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> well, you know, it was like after looking at uh, uh, the Tennessee thing. Mm -hmm. You know what happened yeah. there? Yeah. Yeah. It was Athens, Tennessee. Yeah. Yes. But you looked at those people who were willing to die for something that was right. 
Uh, you don't see much of that anymore, and yet you'll see a lot of people who are willing to die for the government if it says it's right. Sure. In other words, government has been their, uh, uh, you know, their excuse, their, their license to kill. And, and, and look at how many, how many young people have done that, and yet here we are in this day and time in this <coughs> bad situation, and yet most people would never think of giving up their life for that for for God for God for righteousness, and yet the government says we need you to you know to kill, kill. kill. no problem uh, you know I'll risk my life out. It's I'll a license. It. A license. You know, we have permission license to kill. kill. We have a license to kill. That yeah. reminds me of James Bond. Yeah, when you true. really think about it, yeah. he was licensed to kill. Yep. Yet they had the sexual perversion in it also. Yep. He got the women. So I, I, I would urge everybody, and that article just finished, wow. and, I, and I did a little sermon this about a week ago on TV. Before you pull the trigger, whether you're commanded by your God to or not, I'm talking about the earthly God. You better make sure you're right. Oh, they're right. Yes, Jerry. Well, the thing that I see in that commandment, right, is it's, it's very simple. Thou shalt not kill. He doesn't explain it. He doesn't put conditions on it. He doesn't explain it any other way than those simple words. Thou shalt not kill. And that's God's commandment. At that point, thou shalt not kill. It's God's responsibility. When you make any variation on that commandment in any way, right, you take responsibility. Sure, you do. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's why I can't. I mean, that's why Christ clarified murder. I, 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 listen, I didn't directly bomb the people in, in Nam, but I helped them get there. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of commandment that in all cases makes you responsible to God because he exactly. doesn't put conditions on it he doesn't explain it to you it's simple as this I say thou shalt not kill and if you do whatever the way is right you're responsible to me that's exactly right and, and, a, and a better even a more general point all this makes you responsible to him everyone yes else. yes and verse 14 oh this sounds so easy Thou shalt not commit adultery. Wouldn't you think that's just a given? Yeah, it would be a given. I mean, come on. I mean, I wrote an article again uh, about marriage, the most sacred covenant on earth. Marriage is the most sacred covenant. Of course, ours are Christ. I'm talking about earthly covenant. Marriage is the most sacred covenant on earth. That's why it would not to be violated. That's why Christ uh, and the scripture tells us, till death do you part. That's why Christ condemned divorce and remarriage. It's sacred. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it says. And, and so, uh, look up Genesis chapter. Uh, uh, see where we'll find it for you, Joe. Genesis chapter one. Oh. And can look up chapter two. And then look up Matthew 19. So you you want him one to me? Yeah. Too. All right. And marriage is the first and original covenant ordained by God between two people. I said two people. Mm -hmm. And I said people. Because now they want to marry robots. Am I telling the truth? Go ahead. Yeah, and in Noah Webster's Dictionary it says, uh, marriage is a sacrament instituted by God for the prevention of the promiscuitedness of the sexes and for the raising of children. Wow. It's just the opposite now. Marriage is two men, two women, an abomination to God, and then now we're giving children preference to those kind of, quote, civil marriages. So, so government has their own marriage. Sure. That's a new God to make their own rules. Yeah. And do you know why they get a license from the state get married? You know, license and marriage is not biblical, and it wasn't even law in this land until the 1800s. Yeah, it was, it, it, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't needed. So marriage yeah. is between God, between two people and God, and that's why a pastor and the witnesses were designed. It was a covenant. That's the kind of marriage I do, a covenant marriage. I will not do a license or marriage yeah. because the license makes the state a third part of the marriage, and they had no authority in my home. That's why we have a covenant marriage. You get me start preaching again, Joe, if you don't shut up. <laughs> well, I think I might just add something to that. Go ahead. Today, 
more people are cohabitating together from the age group of 50 on down. Sure. Than are getting marriage license. Yeah. And now we have the sodomites are asking, wanting a marriage license. And it doesn't make sense that the evil wants <coughs> license. And those who should be walking in righteousness and in holiness are not getting a license. Well, the evil wants license to say it's legal now, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, that's why we have laws too, right? Yep. Genesis 1, 27, 28, what's it say? <clears throat> so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So he brought forth, was it male and female, you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, marry, yes. come together and have children, is that what he said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's chapter 2, verse 20 say, Kelly? And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Now, this is something you listen to. Everything they <coughs> created had male and female. Mm -hmm. Adam had no one. Correct. And he thought he could approve on that. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> anyway read, go ahead and read, read down through verse 25 and read it one verse at a time. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Keep on going. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Why would he take part of a man to make the woman? Because what? they are of one flesh. Mm -hmm. There you go. What did, what's it say in the, new, in the new, new Testament when you say to come together in union become, become one? one? One flesh, yes. You know, and, and I don't know how to tell you how sick that is. I mean, I didn't appreciate it for years and probably still don't know <laughs> way. But Marsha, I've been married going on 47 years. And I want to tell you this. And it's corny if you like it. I don't care. I still like her sitting in my lap, holding my hand, or laying down beside me. I do. Because he made us one a long time ago. And as time goes along, we get closer together than we ever were. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this right now. The longer you're married the more you need each other, if it's a good marriage. Go ahead, Kelly. It's at 23? Yeah. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I keep on going. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Great. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Definitely no gender issue there. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it given for a man and woman only to be naked and not be ashamed? It was in the Garden of Eden. Well, I'm talking about as far as relationships. You're talking so, about today? Oh, in the husband bedroom. and wife. Yes. Husband yeah. and wife. Husband and wife. Other than that, nudity is wrong. In public, you know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. wrong. But do we see a lot of that today? Oh, yes. 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 Huh. I mean, even in the day of the streets of Elkins or anywhere else you go, when you see young, and I went both today, how much are they covered sometimes? Not very much. No. The bodies were given to share between a husband and a wife only. Bill, is that a pretty good idea, you think? Uh, his blueprint's perfect. It is, isn't it? So that's what's causing lust of the flesh. Of course it is. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, people, children don't get those ideas in their mind unless somebody puts it there. It don't just come out of nowhere. Why do you think pornography is so dangerous? Yeah. Come on, folks, think a minute. I know. And why would they put it in front of you all the time in, in stores and magazines? And uh, why? Why do you want to do that? Who, who are they trying to reach? They're trying to reach our immoral side of our life. Sure, exactly. And, and chapter uh, 19, land 1 through 6. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee. 
and came into the coasts of Judea and beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Wow, that's hard to understand, ain't it? I don't, I don't understand how people, I mean, that's so hard to understand. I mean, no one is confusing, Jerry. We should understand two men get, I mean, that's, that, besides, that's blasphemy. Who would say that? Who would preach that today, Phil? That's so cruel to say that. <clears throat> male and female made he them? Yeah, that's what Satan says. Oh, go ahead, Leah. I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, <clears throat> and, and they'll tell you that homosexuality is not, not in the Bible. It's not a sin. Go ahead, Leah. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twain but one flesh, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. How do you rip apart your own flesh? You become one flesh. You think it's godly to rip it apart? You think man has authority to do that, really? But we regret it, don't we? I won't read more scripture. I just want to get done there. I'm going to try if I can. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. And why do you think adultery in the Bible will bring forth a death penalty? Now think about that. Why was it worthy of death? And it still is, biblically. Okay, because it was very wickedly evil. When a, a man and a woman come together in a virtue, and when that flower is taken from the woman, it is a blood covenant. Now, because it's a blood covenant, it's intended for one man, one woman, for yep. twain, forever. Forever. To death do you part. And to never be separated. To death do you part. Now, there's one other reason behind that is because Satan knows that if he can commit to fornication going on today, it tears the nation apart. Oh, yeah. Now, if the virgins, virgins come together and they marry together, stay together forever, he knows that he can't get into that relationship. I understand that the death is the only thing that gives a right to remarry. Mm -hmm. Death of the spouse. Okay, that's it, period. I know what everybody wants to say, but that's true. But when somebody committed adultery, or, or, or uh, was actually one sin given in the Bible for a divorce was fornication. Fornication is not adultery, it's sex before marriage. Yes. And why do you think they would go check the bed sheets? <laughs> Uh, it's in the Bible. Just check for the flower. To make sure that it was what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. If it was not, then a the man could divorce that woman. Yep. That's in the Bible, folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and they should be put to death for that. But also, when the, when the fornicator was put to death, or adulterer was put to death, the, cup, the man woman was free to remarry them because their death done them part. Mm -hmm. You follow that? Right. They set them free again. But when you get to see people today getting married and married and married and married and married, it's what what how do you what's that do to society? Well, you got tired of her, I want another one. Now, let's look what Christ said. Now, this is my, Christ himself, Matthew chapter five, verse twenty-seven. He takes it further. You have heard it said. You've heard it. You, you have heard that it was said in, by, by them of old time, "Thou shalt not commit adultery." But I say unto you that whosoever looked upon a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Mm -hmm. Christ took it further than the physical act. He said, "Purified in your heart." Yep. How many people will admit you got to watch what you look at? Oh yeah. Come on, folks. Yeah, just just being honest here. Yeah, you do. God, Satan knows your weakness, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Now let's go look at verse 31. It has been said that whoso shall put away his wife, I mean divorce her, let him give her a right in divorcement. But I say unto you, now this is Christ saying this, not me, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving, that means except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, commit adultery. 
Obviously. Now, what do I do with that? Do I throw it out, tear it out because I don't like it? Is that what Christ said or not? Now, to sin and ignorance can be forgiven, folks, but if you, if you know what the truth is, then do it. That's dangerous. I tell you, that's what the book said. I didn't write it. He set this aside for a purpose. <coughs> Thou shalt not commit adultery to keep a marriage relationship pure, clean, chaste, and virtuous in, how can I describe it? A, a loving relationship that gets sweeter as time goes along. Had a fellow die here about a month ago of Nettie. His name is Gary Jones. His first wife had died, and, and he married a lady who was a widow, and her husband had died. And they got married. Gary died on one day. His wife died the next day. Oh, wow. They were close. And I can't imagine, although times like try, I can't imagine I had Marsha around. After going on 50 years, and Jerry got used to her. And she's a good cook. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I'm saying, as if you will work, make your work as he says to in the scriptures, marriage is a huge, huge blessing. Such a blessing that I can't begin to comprehend it enough to share it. Let's move on now. Yeah, that's why uh, married people live on it. That's true, that's proven. Of course, I always joked and say the slang to do, but no, that really is proven. This feels like to do, uh, <laughs> All right, let's look at verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. Well, that's easy, preacher. I ain't going to take a gun and rob nobody. How about if you lie on a welfare application and get money? Come on. Is that stealing? Yep. Is it? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know people call themselves Christians who have lied to get money? Yep. Oh, yeah. Come on now, folks. I'm telling the truth here. I've done it. We've all we've all screwed up and have done super things. I'm telling the truth, but is it? I mean, when the government, our new God, steals from us, they call it what? Taxation. Pay your share, buddy. <laughs> Revenue. Revenue. Mm -hmm. Pay your fair share. It's called stealing, which gets my will. Yep. When they take my money to murder children promote the public school system against my permission. It's my money. Is that stealing? It's legalized stealing, but it's stealing. When they take my funds to give a, 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 a pay for a, 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 I don't know, some welfare bond that doesn't want to work, or an illegal alien come in and take, take the jobs or, or take get welfare, and I'm paying for it. I don't want to pay for that, but my God says I have to. That's still stealing. <coughs> You don't come and take what you have. Exactly. You don't pay your you don't pay your rent me once a year, I'll come and take your house. Yep. Is it your house? No, it's not your house. No, it's it's not our house. You pay rent on it. Right. That's stealing. La Cosa Nostra. Yeah, there you go, exactly. Yep. So I the point getting a lot of this, but I, Christians who lie to get money from any source is a is just the same as pulling a gun at a grocery store and saying, Give me your money. Mm -hmm. One's a little more blatant and will say illegal. That one's a little sneaky and works better, safer. Now, Butch, in this case here, thou shalt not steal. If a Christian is signing to get that money taken from the other people, he's also then acknowledging that God, the government, <coughs> is sovereign and not God, Christ, is sovereign. That's right. Yep. Now, let's look at verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Oh, that's easy, preacher. Does it happen? Yes. I wonder, does law enforcement ever lie to get us in jail? No. <laughs> Have we seen it happen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do judges lie? Yes. yes. Do politicians lie? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my. Do their lips move? Do what? I said, do their lips move. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. I mean, Obama said before he was elected that he was all about man and woman marriage, nothing else. He said so. Mm -hmm. And so did Hillary say that. Yeah, but what's he married to? Uh, yeah, I know. And We're what's he what, what lie about? What? We're wondering. It's a what? So I wonder, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness, and thou shalt, then we say thou shalt not lie, but it goes even deeper than that. Do you know that if, you, if I bear false witness against Joe, if I told me that he did something, he stole something, and, and found out that I lied about that, I had to pay his penalty for what he was accused of. You know, that's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If I said he committed murder, and it's proven I was lying, 
Guess who got to pay the penalty? Mm -hmm. He was taking that seriously. Well, that's a nice way to kind of keep you from not bearing false witness. Yes, it is. It works. So this is simple. We can move on with that. Any, any comments on that? Yeah. All right, let's look at uh, verse 16. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid, manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Any comments on that? Well, just more, but anything on that. All right, just curious. Colossians chapter 3. Somebody look it up very quickly. I ain't going there. I was just thinking of this. Uh, when, when West Virginia, we're under the 1872 Constitution. Right. Well, I'm already there. And the Constitution Party actually found the handwritten draft that went to the governor that was disseminated to the people to vote on for that Constitution. And I got to thinking about it. The United States Constitution was never adopted by the people. No, it was never a contract between no, the people for that government. Did I, I, did I give that book? I'll give you one I did. Did you read about like that? I think I give it to you. Yeah, maybe that's where I got the uh, idea. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we never signed it. We never signed so it. So it's not binding, actually. But anyway. Yeah, there's no contract with us. No, it's not. But thou shalt not covet. Then Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 says what? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection evil con concupiscence and covetousness which is idolatry. Covetous is idolatry. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because you want somebody else's thing, you're, you're coveting what they have. Yes. Sure. So to covet... <clears throat> Wait. Well, I was just looking at the next verse 6. Which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Amen. Amen. Now, is the dis children of disobedience the Christians that are walking away from God? Yes. Or is it is. the people in general? Well, they're, they're, well his, they're not his children, if not, not his people. Right. They're not his children. So, I wonder, have we become guilty of covetous to covet things that to be given to us by our new God? <coughs> Don't we covet the checks? Yep. and the benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that covetous? Is it not? Mm -hmm. And we were told not to do that in Jeremiah 17, 5. Don't do that. You know what would happen if we did? Our whole economic system is built on covetous. Is that idolatry? Yeah. What's he just read? <coughs> I mean, look at, look at even the quote Christian holiday of Christmas. What's it all about? Covetous. covetous. I mean, this place, did, did we, look, did we as children get up to celebrate Christ's birthday, go see what Santa Claus brought. Come on now, let's be honest. All right? The other night I talked about this with, with the next switch on the radio, Bill Steblin. I asked him, why do we give gifts to each other when it's Christ's birthday? <laughs> I'm curious, okay? <laughs> so anyway, so we have coveted, but let's get back down to our new God. Does our new God covet anything? Like ownership of the people, control of the people, the system that will make sure people are, obey all their new laws. God Almighty put out 10 commandments. We have 32 million laws in the books right now by our new God. Which do you think would have been simpler to serve? 10. Then why can we do it? Well, God covets our souls. So, yeah. <laughs> so here we are sitting at, at, at the end of this lesson, man the usurper, and I'm as guilty of this as anybody ever listened to this. I really and truly am. I see it now, and I'm sorry I ever got involved, and I'm sorry about all the things I've done. That's why Christ died, and forgive me for that. If he, if he hadn't done that, I wouldn't have a snowball's chance in hell. I'd be frying right now, and you would be too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not because, Jerry, I'm a perfect man, I teach this. God knows I'm not. I was saved by the grace of Christ, washed by the blood of you, just like everybody else must be. So I'm not throwing stones. We've all done this. But that doesn't excuse us to continue doing it. Yes, Phil. It, it, it's reassuring to know that with God, it's not where we are, it's the road we're on. That's why you could live uh, an ungodly life, but if, if you're on the road, and of course it, it can be hard if you're, well, it's impossible if you're reprobate, but if you're not, all you have to do is be trying to serve Him with all your, with all your heart and and want to serve him and him alone because he is the sovereign and you know then 
their salvation can be had. Yeah, that that's that's the key. I mean, I can't back up and redo what I've done in the past. I can't fix my mistakes. I can't. I did things that shame of anybody else who do something besides shame of beside me. <laughs> oh yeah. I can't go back and reverse that. And if I think about it, I still feel bad about it. I do. And if I let Satan do it, Jerry, he'll drag me down and say, look what you've done 40 years ago. Well, I can't help that now. He wants to remind me. He does. Yes. So I say, Father, I mean, Satan is under this stuff being cleansed by the blood. <clears throat> Forget it. I'm not going to let you drag me back into that. I'm not going to, I did it. I'm guilty. I'm, and I've been forgiven for it. Aren't you glad that the grace of Jesus Christ is real? Yeah. Mm. Amen. Yes. What would you do right now if you didn't have that hope in you? What the world's doing, drugs, yeah. escape. It'd be yep. just exactly the way it is. Where would you go? So people, this isn't discouraging teaching. This is to show you that we're all human. We've all, we've all come short of the glory of God. We've all failed on keeping his word. Christ come to redeem us from our own sins, to cleanse us from our sins, not to justify us and put us back on the road and say, go do some more of them. He said, I've cleansed you now. Go do what I want you to do. So he purified us. Okay. Any comments in closing? No. That's why Christ said, go and sin no more. Exactly. So please, folks, understand to walk in his will doesn't mean that you're perfect in the human because we're not. There's no good thing in the flesh. But walk in his grace and appreciate that grace. Rejoice in that grace. Praise him for that grace. Share with the joy in your heart the grace he gave you. Don't let Satan make you angry and bitter and discouraged. He'll tear you down and destroy your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's all done by grace through faith. So understand this. But Paul deserves nothing but damnation. But by the blood of Christ, I have righteousness in me because of him. So I have a joy in my heart that Satan cannot take from me. Satan has come to kill, to steal, steal and, and destroy. to destroy. And he's doing a good job of it. Well, folks, we'll we'll see you back here uh, later. Uh, probably in, um, I think about the first Saturday of January. I'll let you know if you're showing down on the radio, whatever. But I'll talk to you soon.